Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the all new range from Auto Trail, which is the XL and this one behind me is the 690T model. So to hook the motorhome up, first of all, whether you're charging it at home or you're on your site, get your hooker blade, lift the collar on the hooker blade to expose the connections. The wheel flap on the van slides up, exposes the connection. Hook up here, then hook the site or home if you're home charging, just so that you're never walking around with a live lead. So just below the hookup point, you do have a wastewater outlet drain. So this is any water that you've collected from any sink, shower or hand basin. It goes into a separate holding tank and then on the way out of the site, drive as close to the grid or the gully or as the hedge or the verge as they want. Some sites are all different and all you need to do is pull this open and this will allow your dirty water out. Always get rid of your dirty water at the site. Don't travel around with it because you're traveling around with it for no reason. It's dirty, what more can you do with it? And it's gonna add more weight to the vehicle, impact your payload and your consumption of diesel. So get the water out, travel without it, and always make sure that this is fully drained off in the winter and left open so no water can sit in here and potentially freeze over the winter when we're experiencing colder temperatures. So using your habitation key, you'll be able to open all the locks on the outside of the vehicle. But starting off with this locker, this is your toilet, so this is a cassette. So if you push the catches in, it will drop the door. And in here you do have the cassette, so lift and slide it out. Once you've got the cassette out, you can either carry it or you can wheel it to the disposal point. Once you get to the disposal point, which is normally near your shower and toilet block, you would remove the grey cap which sits on here. So remove the grey cap, pop that to one side, expose the end, tip it out. Once you start tipping, if you just press the orange button at the back of the cassette, it will allow a bit of air in, stop it glugging, and it'll give it a consistent flow, make it all pour out. Once it's all poured out, put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again. And then the cap, which is a which goes on the end here, is 120 mil. So it's a measuring stick as well. So if you pour your chemical into there, either the blue or the green, depending on what the site prefers you to use, because all sites are different. And then you would just put it into here, screw the cap back on, push it back into the van, and then it's good to go and you can use the toilet. The toilet will indicate on the inside when it's full and requires the cassette to be emptied. Just below you've got a blue tap, similar to your grey water, this is your fresh water. So if you've taken on a source of contaminated water or you're not using the van for a couple of weeks, let your water out or you drain it down for the winter, which you want to make sure that no water is left in the vehicle so it can't freeze when we're experiencing cold temperatures. You will just open this tap and this will allow your fresh water out of the vehicle. So that's your fresh water drain, make sure that's left open in the winter so no water can freeze. This is your exhaust for your heater as it's a wheel underslung heater for both the vehicle space heater and water heater this is the exhaust so if you do see uh, smoke or steam coming out of there don't panic it is just the exhaust and that obviously is the exhaust for the main vehicle so to fill the vehicle with water you wheel flap picture of water here with a key it is lockable with a small key so you can lock it to stop people interfering with the water carry yourself a hose pipe with a hose pipe fitting because mainly it's just a brass tap provided on site and what you would do is carry some hose fittings flat end the hose through the grooves there and allow it to over allow it to filter the overflows so until you look on board your control panel and think you've got enough water on board if you can't get water the hose pipe to the vehicle and you can bring water to the vehicle there's a wheel pump so you can put the power pins in here the hose in there and the pump into the water and it'll suck the water out of the aqua roll the bucket or the container and into your fresh water tank that's more if you're wild camping and you can't get a hose to the vehicle you can bring water to the vehicle and fill your fresh water tank up here you've got an external cold water fed shower so in the summer it's great for hosing the dog off the bikes the muddy boots yourselves if you've been on the beach that pops off same as a hose so you hose fitting into there on the other end of the hose they've got a trigger gun 
So as long as the pumps are inside the vehicle, you've got a pressurized flow of cold water. And then you can just put the flank back in. So on this 690T, you get the large garage area. So you've got a good sized garage on this vehicle. But just under here, so this comes off. And in here you've got some service points. So you've got your pump. In the winter, when winter rising, there's a filter on here, it's a plastic cover. Once you've drained the water tank out and you've put the pump on for 10 seconds to blow any water in the pump or any lines, get a tea towel or a cloth and just remove the cover off the pump and the actual little filter bit, which is a little metal grid. That will stop any water from freezing in there because what happened was last year, um, a lot of customers were complaining that when they come to use the water again, they were getting little, little bits of water um, out the pump. And what it was is they left the cover on and because we had such a cold snap, it actually split this plastic cover and you had to have new covers to buy new covers and it wasn't just on auto trails it was on a few different manufacturers so for when you're doing your routine of winterizing just remove this plastic cover to stop the water from freezing in there and holding any water you've also got your boiler and your boiler drain is very important if you leave the water in the boiler when it's cold it's going to freeze and 10 liters sits in here so what you need to do is you need to turn this yellow orange toggle from pointing to the driver's side of the vehicle to pointing to the back and you just turn it like so and that'll drain off leave it open when you're not using it so no water can sit in here and potentially freeze so this is your boiler drain here and you can access it under here without removing this cover but if you want to remove the cover you can and it's just in here you've also got the boiler fused spur so when you can turn this on and off Turn it off in the winter so when you're hooked up, you can't turn the boiler on electric. Because if you turn the boiler on when you've got no water in, it's the same as boiling a kettle with no water in. You're just going to burn the element out. So turn it off when you've got it hooked up on the driveway, charging over the winter with no water in. And when you come to reuse it, and you're wondering why it's not working, just make sure you turn that on. And that will allow the water to heat up in the boiler off mains 230 volt. So if, it's, if you get nothing on the panel and you're wondering why the electric's not working, come out here, make sure this is on. On the back of the vehicle, you do have a high level brake light and reversing camera. And fitted as well is two bike rack bars to take a bike rack, which is a Thule bike rack. So get a Thule or Thule, whatever they call it. We call it Thule. Clips in here and you'll be able to take bikes so that's where the manufacturer has strengthened the bike the back panel to take a bike rack so on this side you do have your lpg so liquid petroleum gas this is your gas locker so no motorhomes come with gas bottles the customer has to provide the gas bottle and if you push both in you'll be able to open the door i've got my test bottle on here now so all motorhomes run off propane. Propane does not freeze in the winter, whereas butane, which is blue, not orange, freezes when it gets cold. So this gas you can use all year round. And this is one six kilogram propane bottle I've got on now, and you can fit two in here. So you can fit two sixes in. It's always good to run with two because you can run with the spare in case one does uh, run out. You can replenish with a spare bottle and you don't have to panic. So connected from the regulator that's on the wall of the gas locker, this pipe is known as the pigtail. And to connect it to the bottle, it's a thumb wheel. So it, you don't need a spanner for this type of pigtail that's fitted to this van. It's a thumb wheel, so all you need to do is left, turn it to the left as many times as you can until it's tight. So it's opposite ways with it being gas, left to tight, right to loosen. Turn the cylinder on, so one or two turns of the top knob of the bottle which allows the gas to relieve the bottle and come through to the regulator make sure that the bottle is safely tied in with the tie provided so that it's not going to move when you're traveling and always turned off when you're doing your checks when you disconnect the the van from hookup turn your bottle off lock everything up and make sure it's always turned off before you travel so that 
if you're involved in an accident your gas supply is turned off and there's another space here for another one so you can fit two sixes in like i says or if you wanted to upgrade the system you can always upgrade it to a refillable which is like a gas flow which means you don't move the bottles there will just be a filler fitted somewhere in the skirt or in here where you can fill it with lpg from the petrol station um, that's an option it costs a little bit more but it's well worth it if you're going to go onto the continent with the vehicle because trying to find a gas bottle over there can be a bit tricky whereas you can find lpg near enough at every station abroad on the europe continent so in the summer when you want to do a bit of outdoor cooking this is your external gas point so if you slide this up you've got a connection so the ribbed end goes on to the gas hose so you'll have to get yourself some orange rubber gas hose and this end connects into the bottom here once it's connected you'll be able to turn the valve on so this is your gas valve and this will use the bottle on board the vehicle so it means that you don't have to carry another bottle for your barbecue or your kadak you can just use it from the vehicle cook outside when the weather's nice not like today where it's cold so you wouldn't be doing that on it a day like today on the ford if you open the passenger door and open the flap you've got an easy fill diesel system which means that you don't have a cap you can just put the diesel filler straight into here and fill with fuel and this is a 70 litre diesel tank on the ford and underneath because it's a new diesel engine it does take add blue so your add blue fillers there and it's 24 litres on a ford It'll indicate on the dash, add blue low, 1000 mile countdown. Within that 1000 mile, you've got to top the vehicle up with add blue. And to do so, you can either buy it in the drums, but personally, I wouldn't bother buying it in the drums because they're going to charge you 30 pounds for 10 litres. I'd go to the petrol forecourt and there'll be add blue if it's a decent sized forecourt. So if they accommodate wagons, There'll be an add blue pump, put the pump in here and fill it and you'll be paying about £1.20 a litre and that's 24 litres. However, it'll not take 24 litres when the light comes on. It'll take about 17 because you'll still have some add blue in there. But it, it'll do a full 5,500 mile on add blue before it, it's completely empty. But once you've done around four and a half you'll get a thousand mile countdown and just make sure that once you've done this give this a tap and make sure that bottom bit's clipped in so to open the bonnet on a ford transit you need your key and you need to put it above the ford badge into here and then you turn it to your left which will pop the bonnet and then it release it turn it to the right and lift the bonnet up so stay there to keep the bonnet up so just pop that into there and underneath the bonnet you do have your screen wash your oil filler and your brake fluid your dipstick here for viewing the levels so you might just want to check your oil level and um, now and again or before every trip just to make sure you've got enough oil in the engine once you start using it you've got a weight plate here so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight four and a half with a tow bar on of towing so you can tow a ton behind this vehicle coolant under this one which is a positive terminal for your engine battery because the engine battery is underneath the driver's seat like every ford transit has been it's not under here that's a positive for giving or receiving a jump start and you'd earth off the engine hoist here so get a good connection there you might have to scrape the black hook the black um, jump lead onto there just to get a good earth and that should be able to give or receive a jump start from your vehicle so to operate the control panel what you need to do is you need to press the on button and it'll bring you straight into the home page so when you first get on the vehicle you'll want to put lights on so if you click lighting you've got your main interior lights which are all then individually switched around the van and you've got your outside awning light which you can turn on you can also change the percentage of dimmer and you can press the dim and you can dim your dimmable lights which are fitted 
to the vehicle. Power, you can see that your leisure battery, because it's got a picture of a trailer leisure battery, is 95% charged and the current voltage is 13.7 volts. That is a false reading because as you can see here, it's shown that we're hooked up. So take the hook about to get a true reflection of what charge is in your leisure battery. And the current coming into the battery is 9.6 amp. You can scroll along and you can see your vehicle battery. So it's saying vehicle, got a picture of a truck there, vehicle battery, good. And it's saying it's 12.5. If you wanted to charge a vehicle battery, which some people like to do over the winter when it's standing, alternate between vehicle and leisure, you just press here and it'll come and say charging. And then you can see that's gone up, so it's receiving some charge. Current solar panel ampage to the leisure battery is 0, 0.0 amps because what happens is when you hooked up, the solar panel can't compete with that charge that means electric's bringing in, so it does go to sleep. And it'll tell you there the estimated time to charge your battery, your percentage of battery, and your capacity. So if we we'll go back to the leisure there, there it's, so to get that full, it'll take one hour. It'll take 50 minutes now even. The health's 100% and it's 66 amp hours. Water, click on water and you can view your fresh water reading. So you can see that your fresh water is 50% full on your fresh. If you're using it over the winter, and you stop the water from freezing when using it, it's fitted with tank heaters. So you can turn your tank heaters on here and you've got heated tanks on the fresh and the waste water. So you can turn them on and off here if it's going to potentially go to freezing temperatures overnight. Making sure your pump's on, you'll get a pressurised flow of water to the taps, toilet and shower. Don't put the pump on if you haven't got any water on board because you'll burn the element out on the pump and the motor. And this is your waste water levels there as well. So you can see there it's showing 0% waste because your waste is not full. Scroll along the environment, you can view the internal temperature, the internal humidity and the external temperature there. And then you go into settings and you can turn off your key beep. So if it's beeping, just where it says key beep, you can turn that on and off. Sometimes it's a bit annoying and you can view all your settings through here. And then if you just do go into help at the top of the panel, it'll tell you which each button does, which is quite handy if you ever get stuck. It tells you what the lighting does, the power, the water and the pump and the environment. So to operate your heating and hot water, it's fitted with a whale heat air system. So it's whale that provide the heating and hot water. And all you need to do is wave your hands past the controls as the motion sensitive they will react to movement and you do have your hot water and heating so separate dials you can't really go wrong because one's wavy lines which indicates seat one's water drop which indicates water so starting off with the water so frost start which is the snowflake which keeps the water above freezing at five degrees. Then you can go, you've got 40, 40 degrees of water or 60, which is the boost setting at the bottom. So if you want the hotter water, make sure it's all the way around with the plus and the minus. If you want it just a little bit cooler, you're not bothered about how hot the water is, you can have it on 40. But well, we'll say 60 for this. And then depending on what source you want to use. So it's either gas or electric. So if you're well camping, you would have no other option but to use gas. So you'd, in, you'd press the gas flame there. Blue means I've selected it. Once it pulls the gas through and starts operating on gas, it will go to orange. So I've selected it, it's on standby there of gas. Give that a moment or two and that will go orange and start to operate on gas. If you weren't well camping and you were on a site you wouldn't bother using the gas you'd use your electric because you've paid your site fees after all 
So you press electric and again blue means on standby, orange means that they're both on. And you can have them on together should you be in desperate need for hot water. But with the electric, so we'll knock the gas off a moment and we'll explain the electric mode. So you've got three little dots, so press and hold one dot is 750 watt, which equivalents to six amp being drawn. Two dots is 1500 watts, which equivalent to 10 amp being used. And three dots is 3000 watts, which is a 16 amp feed. Got a reset button under here so if you ever get a red exclamation mark you can reset it here by pressing and holding the reset button and then now for the heating so you've got plus and a minus frost start keeps the interior temperature above five degrees picture of the moon there which is known as nighttime mode which keeps the van at 15 degrees and then all the way around to 30 degrees maximum heat. Gas if you're while camping and you weren't hooked up, because that would be the only source you'd be able to heat the vehicle off. That will go to orange once it's selected and operating. Blue is standby, so you've selected it, give it a moment and it will light. Electric, obviously three modes, 750 watts on six amp, 1500 watts, 10 amp, and 3000 watts, which is a 16 amp feed. So you've got 6, 10, or 16. So depending on what your site offers you, some smaller CL sites you might have to use um, one or two, so 10 or, 10 or 6. And on bigger sides, you can use 16 on three. But by all means, you can run the gas and electric together on both sources if you're away in the winter and it's cold to get the vehicle up the temperature inside and the water if you're in desperate need of a shower. You can, you can put them both on together to reduce the time it takes to heat the water or the vehicle. So in the kitchen, you do have three gas burner hob so do just make sure that your glass lid's always back and it's always cold before you put the glass lid down if you've had them on because otherwise you will shatter the glass. Yeah, the gas there. There you are. Sometimes when you've just put the bottle on or you've had it off for a while, you've got to listen for the gas, allow it to bleed through. Once you can hear it, press the ignition. So there, there's three burners and underneath you do have your grill. You will just have to hold the grill knob in a little bit longer so it warms the thermal couple up before releasing and it'll stay on like it has there and underneath You do have the oven. So in the cupboard underneath the oven, you do have your gas isolation valves. So you've got four grey taps here. So the gas comes off the bottle through the regulator into the van and then it'll come to these four taps and that distributes the gas to the various gas appliances in the vehicle. Any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced. However, if you know what's leaking gas and you think you've got a gas leak and you say it's the the boiler, because that's the first tap closest to me, what you can do is you can isolate it by, th these are all on, knocking it that way and that is closed. But any problems with gas, be safe and isolate the source of gas, which is your gas bottle. Got some storage in here as well. You'll also find a fire extinguisher in here. Some data about your space heater, which is from the manufacturer wheel. So if you ever need any model numbers or anything for parts, that's on the floor there. 
and you do have your barbecue point your gas external gas point there as well at the back which is accessible from outside the vehicle to operate the fetford compressor fridge which works off your 12 volt leisure battery all you need to do is turn it on here so just press and hold and it'll come on you can adjust the temperature there by scrolling up and down or if you want to change it once it's been on all you need to do is press and hold wait for it to flash there and you can adjust the temperature when pre-chilling you may want this on five however with a compressor fridge it does get very cold so once you've put your shopping in turn it down because sometimes five can just be too strong and can potentially freeze your shopping so that's your temperature this here is nighttime mode so if you've got it on full five and you're trying to sleep with it being a compressor fridge you can hum slightly you can turn it on a nighttime mode and what that does is it lowers the decibels of the fridge by reducing its performance which means it'll be a little bit more quieter with the fridge what you want to do is when you're not using it you want to make sure that you leave the door open because what will happen is it's got a rubber seal on the door it will trap the air and it'll start to smell especially over the christmas when you're not using it if you're going to store it for a couple of months so take everything out give it a wipe out with some antibacterial wipe sprays make sure it's clean and then just rest the door upon the hinge there with the blue clip in the center and it'll stop the door from locking a separate freezer box in there as well and that is your fetford compressor fridge so at the back of the 690t you've got steps in the middle two single beds on there storage slides out so you've got some slide out storage for your shoes and bits and pieces in there always make sure the catches are pushed back in a little bit of storage there as well under here you do have some storage on some shelves but you've also got a hanging rail this is your wardrobe what you can do is you can remove the shelf and bring it down so that you can hang your clothes and that's on either side so you've got one this side one that side but you can lift it up from the top as well so you can get in from the top and hook your clothes on which is quite handy and that's on either side of the vehicle And what you can do with the beds on the 690T, if you get the board, which was stored in the wardrobe, but you can store it anywhere and put it on top of the wardrobe doors and slide it in. It allows you to take this cushion here and pop it into the middle. And form a double bed across the width of the vehicle instead of having so stepping into the washroom to operate your toilet ensure that the pump's turned on and you'll be able to press the blue button here which is your flush button so your toilet does turn press the blue button put a small amount of water in the toilet before you use it this helps lubricate the seal between the the ball of the toilet and the top of the cassette so it doesn't stick and then before you use it you want to open the blade which is this grey handle here so that slides to the right you can use the toilet once you've finished using the toilet you'd obviously give it a good flush if you've bought the blue and pink chemical the pink isn't needed because it's a freshwater fed cistern unlike some other motorhomes and caravans where you have a separate header tank however you can still use it but all you need to do is put in a spray bottle and spray the bowl because you can't put it into the water system because it's fed to the shower and all taps so you'd spray flush and then when the toilet indicates that it's full the cassette you'll get three green lights underneath this diagram here on the back wall of the toilet to say that it is full and that means you can as long as it's shut, which get into a habit of shutting it, you'll be able to slide it straight out the side of the van and use empty, replenish and put it back in to use the toilet.
Tight the roll holder. Push the catch in there and you do have some toiletry space and some more toiletry space here. Shower curtain which comes across but on the door you do have a towel rail as well and a hanging rail for some towels or your dressing gowns. Kitchen tap is also your shower head so press here and you'll be able to get a pressurised flow of water and stop there. And that is your hot water there coming through, it's getting nice and warm. And then for the shower, it just pulls out. And it's handheld, and you'll be able to have a shower and then put, feed the pipe back down into here. But when winterizing, in the winter to stop any water from freezing in here, pull this out, unscrew the shower head from the hose and lie the hose down in the shower tray. And it just means that you can leave the tap open when you've drained all your water system down and no water is going to freeze in here and cause any damage to this pipe. It's also good that you leave all mixer taps open so do it for the kitchen tap as well. One thing I will say about all the washroom, it's all plastic lined so do just be careful with what you wash and clean the shower, tray, toilet, sink at width and surrounding walls because you will damage the finish if you use anything harsh like bleach or any scourers. I personally would use some Dettol spray or some flash spray uh, or wipes don't use any bleach products uh, and don't use any harsh abrasive scourers. Use a microfiber cloth or just as simple as a little bit of fairy up liquid on a cloth and clean it all out. So to make the front extra two travelling seats into a single bed as it converts into a single, what you've got to do is you've got to lift the table up to about 90 degrees and lift it off the rail. You then want to put the table aside for a moment but you will need to adjust the leg so this extension just tighten that up there pop that out the way for a moment because you don't need the table yet lift the base cushion up and there's a catch here that needs to be you need to push the catch out and that will allow the front dinette to open up. So that slides out there. This base cushion, you can remove that for a moment as well. That slides out. This leg here, push it down. That drops into place and helps keep the front of the extension supported and this folds over. You will then put your base cushion back into position and you'd put some infill cushions on. So we'll show you how to put the infill cushions on and we'll show you how the table clips onto here. So, placing an infill cushion here and then what you need to do is, there's a bar here, so again, you want to clip the table onto this bar. You want to ensure that the leg comes out as that folds away and that rests upon the door. Then what you'll want to do is you will want to put this cushion, as it's L-shaped, here. And then the big cushion, that goes that way and has created a single bed across the width of the motorhome. So underneath the dinette seat is the location of your leisure battery. So you do have a 70 amp hour lithium deep cycle battery there with a 30 amp master fuse. So that's your main leisure battery. Just underneath your double 
dinette seat. Underneath the fascia of your dinette seat, you can open this and this drops down. And behind here is your Sargent EC 700 power supply unit. So you've got a black button here which says system shutdown button. And what that does is it will stop any power drain from the leisure battery and it acts as a battery cutoff switch. So if you're storing it or you anything like that, you might want to turn that off. But if you do turn that off, it will stop the radio and reversing camera working on the XN head unit and your solar panel putting any charge into your batteries. So do be aware that if you go to reverse the van, you're wondering why the camera or the radio is not working. If you've turned that off, that is why. This side, you've got all your 12 volt fuses. So they will show a red light underneath the fuse if it has blown. I would personally carry some spare fuses with you just in case the fuse does blow. You can replenish the fuse when you're away and you don't have to interrupt your holiday. You can get packs of normal blade fuses on likes of Amazon or eBay quite cheaply now. This side you've got your charger and your heating and hot water. So these are fuse spurs so you can turn them on and off by turning them off like so. But I would just leave them on. They will react to when the vehicle is hooked up unless you are leaving it hooked up in the winter and you don't want the heating and hot water uh, 230 side to work. In case somebody puts it on you can turn that off. And under here you've got your main trip, so your RCD and your MCBs, which will work various appliances. So it shows there that the three MCBs, and it does show all of your 12 volt fuses here. So like I say, carry some spares just in case you need them. Sliding the passenger cab seat forward, you've got your EM56 interface fuses. So these are fuses which cross over between the leisure side of the vehicle and the engine side of the vehicle, such as your electric step fuse, your on and light, your en route USBs, your tone electrics if you want to have them fitted, there is already wired, um, tone permanent live, your fridge element fuse and your vehicle battery fuse which are all under here. So again carry some spares with you just in case you do need them and you can replenish the fuse here. It will also work your marker lights so if your marker lights ever go off it will be a fuse which is under here. As you can see there, the wheel hot water system does provide really hot water, so do just be careful. But this is the hot water system working on your motorhome.